There were a, a couple of... Oh, there was an attack on an Israeli-owned oil tanker by Iranian drones in the Persian Gulf. Now, that, to me, seems like there's another... Um, oh, this was attributed, I should say, to Israel's alleged attacks on the Iranian nuclear program. It looks like it's building up into another hotspot which the world just doesn't need right now. The, the mullahs are lashing out. That's what this is about. They're doing that because they're really worried. Uh, Rafael Grossi, probably the only UN official who does his job uh, at the International Atomic Energy Agency, recently said to their board meeting that the, the mullahs have four atom bombs of highly enriched uranium. Four. So uh, they've also supplied those drones to the Russians, and the Russians have announced just now that they're going to give the Iranians their first ever squadrons of modern fighter jets, the Su-35s. So um, the Americans and Israelis have conducted this uh, massive uh, exercise in the Mediterranean called Juniper Oak, and uh, the Iranians are getting really scared because it looks like the Americans have given up on the Ayatollah regime and they might take action with the Israelis if um, they go across the threshold and establish, uh, they weaponise that um, enriched uranium. So you're absolutely right, uh, uh, Corey. It's getting very hot over there. We'll have the uh, war in Ukraine. We have, uh, uh, as Peter Stefanovic pointed out, the uh, incredible build-up of uh, the Chinese against Taiwan over here. And uh, uh, the Iranians getting very close to weaponising their four tranches of uh, enriched uranium. So uh, the Iran-Russia-China axis um, stands for a different world than we all live in, and we all better stand together or we'll hang separately. Famous words, aren't they? Um, OK, what about this? It's closer to home. 67 of the 81 diplomatic missions that left Ukraine have since gone back, but not Australia. Apparently, the department says it can't waive its responsibilities under the Work, Health and Safety Act when sending staff to conflict zones. But, Michael, the PM can go there. Other world leaders can visit. Other missions can return. Why can't our embassy personnel? Is it important, though? DFAT has a long bias against having diplomatic uh, representation in Kiev. I fought them when I was chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee for years. And thanks only to his now a South Australian MP, Nick Champion's investigation into uh, why we ought to have uh, diplomatic representation in a country of 50 million people, do we have it in a small annex of the Canadian Embassy. So uh, it's gutless of DFAT not to send the ambassador back there. The ambassador wants to go, and Penny Wong should give them their marching orders and say, not only do we put this bloke back in the annex of the Canadian Embassy uh, as a quasi-Australian embassy, we ought to establish our own there and seek proper representation. There's lots in the future of mining and agriculture and many other things we can do with them. Lots of business in the future. Uh, DFAT, get away from your... Uh, Anglophone bias uh, against Eastern Europe. All right. Strong words from Michael Danby. I would expect nothing else, nothing less. Thanks so much for joining me on Bernardi tonight. Really appreciate it.